Hello, Bubble developers. Nikolai Markovic from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add YouTube videos to your Bubble app. Before I get to a demo, please give me a thumbs up if you like these videos and subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it. And also as a bonus, stay to the end. I've got some extra content for you. Okay, so we've got here a video playing already. And if I click on this link here, it'll come up with a different video. And I'll just go back to video number one. So you can see it flipping to two different videos that I have on here. And I've also got this repeating group here, which effectively does the same thing with a bit more information. So I'm gonna walk you through both of these designs for the repeating group. This one is a little bit simpler than, than this one here. So let's get to it. Okay, so first thing is we have on this page here, we have a group and the type of content is text. And I'll show you why it's text uh, in a moment when we get to the, the data design. But basically the information to show the YouTube video is gonna be of type text. And inside of that group, we have this video element. And the video element is right over here. So let me kind of quickly throw a group on here so you could see that. And then we have, where's the video right there for video inside of it. So that's basically what, what you want to do is have this group and then the video inside of it. And then in the group, again, for text, you could type it in. It's a bit quicker because text you'll see is at the very down at the bottom here. So you could just type in text to get to that. And then for the video source, it's YouTube. You do have a choice of YouTube or Vimeo. And in this design, we've got YouTube. And then the video ID. So that's the parent group's text here. And the parent group in this case is this group, which is of type text. The type of content is, is text. The other thing on here is that this play the video automatically on load. I've got that checked off so that when the when the video is shown, it starts to play automatically. And that's basically it for setting that uh, element up. Now, you might be wondering about the video ID. So the video ID, if you look at the text field here, it might be easier to show it here. So this is the actual URL. If you were to go copy this and, and plug it in your URL, you would see this, this video playing. Now, what we really want though is these digits here, the video ID. So this is what goes into this field here is the video ID. And so for instance, I could go over here and just type in those values maybe. Here we go, let's go clean some of this up do this real time for you. Actually, I think I go and this is one of the quirks with bubbles. Sometimes this editor doesn't work so well and I think I got the, no, I didn't get it. All right, this is what happens when you do this live sometimes. And try to select it all and the value okay so that's not letting me do it right now but that's fine because i've got it working right here and the next thing i have on here is this repeating group and basically for this repeating group it's also of type text and then the current users uh, youtube so basically what i have in the data structure let me just jump over to that real quick so for users i have YouTube here, and it's a list of text. So to do that, you basically uh, just do test here, and then it's of type text, and then it's multiples in the list. And that's basically how I have the YouTube list of text here. And now what that allows me to do, if I go to the app data, and I've got this user here, if I scroll down, I've got uh, YouTube, and these are the two um, IDs that I've already entered into the database. Uh, I manually entered these in the database and, and created this. Um, I will point you to a link uh, of another video I created on how to manually enter data into the database. And so that's how we get the, the data set up. 
And then basically in this uh, repeating group, I have a simple text field here, and it's basically showing uh, the video, the current sales index, and that is this number right here, video one, video two, that's actually the index of the repeating group. And then the next is the current sales text. So let's go over here real quick and we'll get a repeating group if you're not familiar on how to set that up. So right here, the default is four rows. I'm just gonna change this to, to uh, let me go to two rows, make it a little bit easier to see. And then inside of the repeating group, I'm gonna add a text field. And as a reminder, you put that in the first uh, uh, cell of the repeating group, and then it gets copied, and it looks like it didn't. Yeah, so let me get it in there, and there we go. So now just you can see here that when I have it outside the repeating group, it doesn't show in both cells, and then I have to move it around, move the text field around a little bit, and then you can see that red line kind of pops up. That tells me that the text field is now in the repeating group. And then basically here, what I've got is the current sales index. So that's how I get that number here, number one and number two. And then what I have is the current sales thing. And actually, this is going to, this isn't in, um, uh, so it's of type text. Type that, text there and then current sales text just like that okay so that's how you set up the repeating group and now basically when you run this do a refresh here it is basically going to pull that information from the user in this user here let me just jump back is this contact at echo lake tech which back to the data, contact at Echo Lake Text. So it's basically showing these two uh, data, the ID here for the YouTube videos. Okay, so now that's how we set up the uh, repeating group and its current user is YouTube. I forgot to mention that. So for this, it's the current user. And then over here, you have all these options from the, the data. And where did it go? YouTube. And that's basically all there is to setting up this repeating group. Now, um, a little more complicated way of doing this is with the second repeating group here. And basically what I did was I created another data uh, type of YouTube. And let me jump to data type, go to YouTube. And basically for this one, and to create it, just you know, again, type in test or whatever you want to call it. And that's how you create YouTube. And then over here for YouTube, uh, what I have is the URL. So that's basically showing this URL here. And I have the video ID and the video name, so basically these fields here. Now the reason why I couldn't do that over here is because if you look at user and I just have YouTube and it's just a list of those links. Now, I could have put the the ID and the U, or rather the name and the URL in there as well. The problem is that you may get these out of sync so that you might have uh, uh, within the repeating group here, you might it won't align with the uh, ID. So let me just jump back over here to YouTube the ID and the name in the URL. So this is the reason to create uh, YouTube here so that they're all contained uh, into this uh, entry into the database. And then over on the app data, so for this, again, I manually created this and I'll, I'll put that link in so you can watch that video on how to manually create entries into, um, into your bubble uh, app. So on here, I just basically copy the URL I copy the ID and then the name of the video. And that was uh, as simple as that for doing the data entry for it. In the repeating group, on here the type of content is, is YouTube. So compared to a uh, user that I had before for this one, the data type is YouTube. And then basically I'm taking the current user's YouTube videos 
and then sorted by ID. And the reason for the sorted by ID is if I didn't have that in there, uh, video one here wouldn't map to uh, video one. Just the way I manually created these, they were out of sync. And, and for this video, I wanted to show that video one here is this video one, and video two is this video two. So it's more of aesthetics uh, than function. Okay, so for current users, YouTube video. One thing over here to come back to users and YouTube videos. And basically in here, I have those two uh, uh, videos uh, added into here. So how to reset forgotten passwords and send data to a pop-up. So that, and basically to do that, how to reset. You can see as I type, start typing in the name of the video, Bubble is smart enough and it'll come up and, and tell me what video it is. I'll cancel out of that. Okay, so now uh, we have the URL, uh, sorry, the uh, repeating group with the right information. And similarly here, I can click on the button and it'll show the video. Now the other thing, and when I click on the text field here, and this is actually the case for both of these, if I click on the text field and go to workflow, all I'm doing is displaying data into the group uh, uh, YouTube video. So basically to do that another under element actions, and I do display data on a group, and then the name of the group, and then the this text, uh, rather, um, current sales text, and current sales text. And that's that's all there is for that one. And then you can see, similarly for the other one, it's, it's the same, uh, except that it's now the current sales YouTube video ID. So this one, we're actually doing the ID. And in this one here, we're doing this, the text. And again, this one here is getting the data. So back to the design. It's coming from the current user, whereas the text here, it's coming from the current user's YouTube videos. So over here, current sales YouTube video, YouTube's ID. So picking the video ID there. And that's how you set up this workflow. The other thing that I did on here, um, again, just more for aesthetics than anything else, is when page is loaded, I do a display data uh, in group. So here, the page is loaded, it's the same display like that. And then current users, YouTube, and then I did the first item. So basically, current users and YouTube, and then the first item. Because remember, it's a list of these in the database, and so I want to pick the first item. I could have picked the uh, the last item, and it would have loaded. I've only got two videos in there. It would have loaded the the second video, on on page loaded. So to get to page loaded, if you're not familiar with the event, uh, general when page is loaded, and that's all there is to it. And then similarly, when the text is is clicked, so that's basically when I come over. Let me just make another one here. So this one. Start edit workflow, and you can see that element action and display data again into the group, current users. Um, and actually, this is not quite set up because I don't have all the groups, but this is how you, you would set it up here. Yeah, this one, the reason why it's not working because I need to, I don't have uh, the group set up for it this text field. Let me go delete this. Okay. And so basically, again, that's how you set it up for showing the YouTube videos. Now, as the bonus material, as I mentioned, is I also did it with Vimeo. Now, for this uh, demo here, all I have is this, this link that shows the uh, Vimeo. Uh, so you could plug that right in, and it would show this video. And down here, all I did was I took the, the digits, the video ID, so these digits here, and just populated them right into the, the video ID. That's all there is to it. 
And then again, uh, the video automatically loads by checking that off. I also have a video uh, the, to replay it. So I'm just going to check that off, refresh it, and you will see after this reloads that it only shows one time. Now if I go click it, and now it will repeat over and over. All right, so that's how you set up uh, both the YouTube video and Vimeo. And Vimeo is very similar, just uh, change the IDs here. So instead of the YouTube IDs, you have Vimeo IDs. And that's all there is to it. Again, give me a thumbs up if you like these videos and subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it. Thanks.